Hi, uh, my name is Kumiana Novakova and I work as a film curator and filmmaker. Uh, first, I would like to thank, of course, Lokomotiva for inviting me to take part in this uh, Living Archive project. Um, I, I believe it's extremely important to articulate our um, diverse experiences in the field of uh, arts and culture, so to be able to also articulate um, the um, uh, most important uh, uh, questions. Um, so the first question we are all addressing is what is your take on culture of solidarity in these times of COVID-19 and how can we produce it? Um, I believe that solidarity uh, and culture of solidarity is uh, not something we can produce, but it's rather a make of, of living. It's a, it's a make of living and that uh, provides space for the common and the collective and uh, it's basically making way for the other. So it's, it's, I would even say, a normative obligation to help each other and to make sacrifices so to reach our um, common goals. Um, and besides giving, helping or supporting, I believe that most importantly is to, to care. Um, the crucial term uh, for me to, to think about in this sense, if we would like to talk about deepening of the processes of the culture of solidarity, is uh, the common, as I said, common goals. Uh, so, at the end, it is about um, three uh, ways of, of living or, 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 or values, uh, uh, common values. Collaboration, um, collectivization and commoning and um, these three values uh, the discussion on these three values take us basically to an uh, old mantra we all share I believe and that is uh, redistribution or maybe uh, the better term to use would be non-hierarchical uh, distribution uh, mostly of wealth and, and power. Um, and that act, the act of non-hierarchical distribution in, in a capitalist, uh, male suprematist, um, racist, homophobic, imperialist uh, culture, is an extremely radical act and it is uh, the basis for a nurturing culture of solidarity. As finally, and here I would uh, kind of end uh, my my vision on, on what culture of solidarity is, is, a, is an ecosystem of collective becoming. Um, this brings me to the second part of the question, which is how we can produce. As I, as I already said, it's not about producing it, it's about nurturing all these transformative processes that strengthen uh, collaboration, collectivization and commoning. Um, and as with the with the pandemic, we are going through times that make us rethink most of our positions and practices. We are also starting slowly to rethink the collectivities and the collective practices. Um, we live way too long with the idea of the individual progress inside of this sacred division of, of, of us and the other. And uh, there is uh, only um, the concept of the other is so um, is so present and insisted upon by the culture of 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 of, of um, uh, capitalism that uh, there are only others. There is the us is gone. The us uh, uh, is uh, is me only basically. Um, and uh, here we 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 have to face uh, the. The, 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 the condition that the only community that capitalism basic, basically produces, the only collectivity, is, is, is me, in fact. It's the society of this abstract individuality and the society of this abstract individual, the supremacy of the individual. 
and we, there is no solidarity, there is no nurturing of culture of solidarity where the individual is the sacred cell. So basically where the system is based on scarcity, on individual competition and on permanent insecurity. So the sooner we face uh, this and we start transforming this into um, valuing social commoning, the sooner we will cut the processes of the destruction of the idea of the common, the idea of the public, and, and the very idea of the interdependence of, our, of, our, um, of the planet, of our ecosystem. Um, the second question we are all addressing is what knowledge are we producing in culture and art now and how should we produce and distribute knowledge? Um, the, the global uh, uh, or the planetary disaster this, this pandemic proved to be placed us all in a position of being powerless. And uh, for me, I believe that this showed everyone at the same time, literally, what it means not to be able to act for yourself. And that uh, is, or at least should be, a truly empowering experience in the sense that it should sensitize us all to what it means to be helpless, and to be powerless. So ideally, we are currently developing and creating knowledge or, or learning um, on how to reimagine the social. And to reimagine the social, of course, we arrive to the concept of political imagination. Uh, so the knowledge that art is expected to produce is political imagination. And this is not only now uh, because of the pandemic, but uh, to this conclusion, we have arrived uh, long before the pandemic as the crisis of the political is here with us for some time and uh, the pandemic just um, uh, in a way uh, opened it right in front of, of our eyes. So I believe that it's crucial to learn how to accept uh, that uh, there is no linearity, uh, no, there is no linearity in past, or in history, there is no linearity in present and in future. And uh, the second uh, is how to accept that the social and the public and the political has to be, uh, besides anti-fascist, anti-racist, anti-sexist, also anti-capitalist and collective, common. The human is not the supreme, we are all together, so it has to be environmental. Um, um, and uh, so this is as far as what is the knowledge that we need to produce and how should we distribute knowledge or the second part of the pre question. Um, besides forgetting about linearity, I think we have to forget uh, about this absolute, the idea of the absolute truth, the royal road of of truth has to be uh, done away with, has to be finished, if we want to open space for the diversity of ways and of perspectives. As, as, as opening the possibility for ambiguity of truth condemns any form of absolutism and therefore it creates an ethical sensibility more inclusive of differences. Um, the third question is what have we learned from the crisis? Um, can we develop different post-crisis modes and condition of art and cultural production, which will allow basic sustainability and reduce the precarious position of cultural workers and artists? Um, to start with, I think that we have to first reject to talk about individuals separated from the environment which is a form of well-being that is modeled on the idea of class and race. Um, the world is a network of ecosystems made up of differently configured, historically dynamic contact zones, rather than set of distinct and separate ecosystems in which human is the, is the supreme. So in the light of that, the post-crisis modes, or better maybe to say the system of values that art and culture should insist upon and nurture, have to be holistic, 
um, it's not the human versus everything else, but human as part of something much larger than her or him. Um, in order to push for this kind of seismic shift, even I would say, we have to use the current weaknesses of the neoliberal system, as now it's in a moment in which it started working against itself. So a starting point has to be to stop understanding neoliberalism as an exception and present itself as the permanent state of exception, as this allowed for the precarious to become our condition of existence. Therefore, in order to be able to act, we have to talk about our precarious existence not only as a condition of labor, but as a historical rule, as an ontological position. All of this, uh, of course, um, in a way, goes alongside the urgency to contradict the holistic liberal paradigm of purpose-free art. There is no purpose-free art. Art is political. Mm. The fourth question, does the COVID-19 crisis bring forward the idea of social equality, social states, and perhaps universal basic income? How can this be reflected in culture and art? Um, as I, I just uh, said, for me, arts are the space for the social and cultural resistance. So again, here we go back to political Im imagination and challenging capitalism itself. We cannot talk about social equality, social states or universal basic income if we don't talk about the whole arch of precarities that capitalism produces. So the solutions are no longer in the hands of the states as commodified labor, appropriation of labor value by the capital and accumulation by dispossession are processes that shape capitalism as a hierarchically structured global system, so system of global economics and geopolitics. In that respect, COVID-19 brought many ideas at the forefront, and here I see culture or an arts as the space for shaping these ideas and mo modeling them so to reflect precisely colonization of, of life as a whole. And the universal basic income in that respect would be the first baby step to three features of arts and culture sector, instability, vulnerability and insecurity, which is, on the other hand, the three uh, aspects that are the breeding ground for our uh, precarious, uh, precarious um, existence. What political and po <clears throat> the, fa the fifth question, what political and policy approaches you would foresee in your field of work or how it should be changed in future? Um, I think that Everything that we have said so far, and most precisely collaboration, collectivization and commoning, are uh, the three approaches that should uh, reign uh, not only um, our field of work, but in general uh, the way of work uh, of all of us and, and, and the system. <clears throat> 